بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارع الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين حبيبنا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد كرمنا بني آدم صدق الله العظيم Beloved listeners السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته A most significant statement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of all he says وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ and most certainly we have bestowed dignity honor and fame to all the children of Adam and our Nabi declared kullukum banu Adam wa Adamu min turab all of you are the children of Adam and Adam was created from humble dust I bring this verse to the fore because Allah Iqbal is very very clear when he said that jo karega imtiyaz e rang boom mit jayega he who brings about distinction between color and any other aspect of a person's personality that person who forwards this type of an ill idea will perish and he says that it can be the Turk who is well known for his prowess or the Arab with the highest lineage which he claims so anyone who does believe in this type of distinction will perish this brings me to something I read two weeks ago and that was that when they wanted this idea of Cecil John Rhodes statue to fall at the Oxford University and one gentleman took the example of Gandhi and he said you know Gandhi said and he actually gave the statement and his opinion was and of course a pontification that the blacks are lower culturally than us of course the Indians at that time or whatever it is and then this guy is arguing for that one statement we won't deny Gandhi fame and so on but no Iqbal says that anyone who makes this type of a distinction will perish and of course now I've got in my possession a book called The Stretch, Stretcher Bearer of the Empire, Mahatma Gandhi by Ashwin Desai and Gulam Wahid. And of course in that I have never found a person more British and more loving of colonialism than the Mahatma as they call him. And Allah Iqbal had more or less a personal clash with him in 1933 December at the round table conference in India where he wanted to short change the rights of the untouchables one of the things he said was that Mr. Gandhi was then asked to secure at least the Hindu and Sikh delegates consent to his offer he did make something like an attempt to do so but failed 
and privately express his disappointed disappointment with their attitude. This is Iqbal writing. Mr. Gandhi's second and most unrighteous conditions was that Muslims should not support the special claims of the untouchables. It was pointed out to him that it did not lie in the mouth of the Muslims to oppose those very claims on the part of the untouchables which they were advancing for themselves and that Mr. Gandhi could arrive at a mutual understanding with the untouchables, the, mu the Muslims would certainly not stand in the way. He must go to the untouchables. He must not say that we must not vote for the rights of the untouchable. Mr. Gandhi, however, missed, ha however, insisted on this condition. I should like to know how far Pandit Jawaharlal with his well-known socialist views would sympathize with such an inhuman action. This is what Iqbal writes. And then, Allama Iqbal, you know, this is in 1933, after the Satyagara, after going from South Africa and all that, he is saying these things. In this sense, perhaps the greatest anti-national leader in India of today is Mr. Gandhi, who has made it a life mission to prevent the fusion of untouchables with other communities and to retain them in the fold of Hinduism without any real fusion even between them and the caste Hindus. As far as I can judge, this is the judgment of Iqbal. His message to the untouchables amounts to this. Do not leave Hinduism, remain in it without being of it. Remain in it without being of it. These are the words of Allah Iqbal when he describes the moves of the Mahatma. And Iqbal believed actually, and he pontificated and in one of his very important talks, he said, there's only one unity is in is dependable and that unity is the brotherhood of man which is above race nationality color or language so long as this so-called democracy this accursed nationalism and this degraded imperialism are not shattered so long as men do not demonstrate by their actions that they believe that the whole world is the family of god so long as distinctions of race, color, and geographical nationalities are not white, wiped out completely, they will never be able to lead a happy and contented life and contented life and the beautiful ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity will never materialize. Yes. So our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this openly. He said that لا فضل لعربيين على جميعين The Arab is not better than the Arab. ولا أحمر على أسودا No, is the white man better than the black man. And remember that Gandhi says he read the life of the Nabi and so on when he was in jail. Didn't he read this teaching of Muhammadur Rasulullah? that the black man is not better than the white man and the white man is not better than the black man. That is Rasul made very, very, very clear because all of us, and he tells the Muslims at all times, Bhutane, Rango, Khunko, Torkar, Millat Me Gum Hoja. Take this idol of blood and color and nationality and smash it to the ground so that it may become one with dust. And then he praises Sayyidina Bilal, a black man, well known in our history and in the history of the world, compares him with Alexander the Great, who is not even mentioned in Europe. He says, because of his love for Islam and Rasulullah, and the love for the equality and the liberty and the fraternity that Islam says, Bilal lives on. And Iqbal talks about him. Iqbal kis ke ishq ka ye faiz aam hai? Iqbal kis ke ishq ka ye faiz aam hai? Rumi fana hua habashi ko dawam hai? Oh Iqbal, 
through for whose love sake is this abundant fame and success and prosperity that is of bilal rumi fana hua alexander the great the macedonian the rumi is dead and it doesn't even come into any account in history habashi ko dawam hai but the black abyssinian bilal lives on and on and on at least 1,6 billion muslims they are all lovers of bilal my son's name is bilal and so many of my friends children's names are bilal white white turkish blonde hair and blue eyes their names are bilal because color does not count in islam and allama iqbal tells you that iqbal believes that for him his hero also is that man sayyidina bilal for there is no such thing as distinction between white black or any other distinction because he says break all these idols and become one in the ocean of humanity wa sallallahu ala nabiyil karim wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa fi al azul al abd dalil تبلغ بالقليل من القليل او بالقليل من القليل واي السد للسفر الطويل واي السد للسفر الطويل وفي عصيانه عار ونار وفي 